What were our products then? Let's circle our products. I think that was the intermediate, because that got attacked, right? Yes. We want to circle the final products, the things that did not go on to get attacked. Um, the uh, halo alkane and water. There's one other product. What's the, what was the product from the other product from the SN1 reaction? That was this. Oh, and uh, the one I was just pointing to. Yes, the other product. So that's the other one we want to circle. This is what we got out of the tertiary carbon. Okay. And here's what we got out of the primary carbon. In the previous example, when we had a acid attacking an ether, we ended up with two equivalents of the same product. But that was because we were attacking a symmetrical ether. Well, here we're attacking what we could call an asymmetrical ether with two different sides, so we would expect to get two different products. Again, if you look at your notes from the last example, in the last example we had a symmetrical ether, so we got two equivalents of the same product after the two attacks. But with an asymmetrical ether, we get two different products on the left and the right hand sides. Notice that ultimately we kept going until the oxygen had been completely kicked off the carbons. The oxygen had ultimately got completely kicked off the carbons and left as water. How, how did the oxygen keep turning into a leaving group? Because it kept getting protonated. And we know that when you protonate something, that makes it into a, a better leaving group. So what types of functional groups did we end up with? Two haloalkanes. We ended up with two haloalkanes. So ultimately here we've seen a reaction that we can do with an ether. This is a way to make an ether ultimately just into haloalkanes. The oxygen just leaves ultimately as water. It would be very easy here to stop too soon and forget about this second step here. So it takes some practice to watch out for the two steps here. Now going back, uh, originally we weren't sure whether the iodide should originally attack this alpha carbon or this alpha carbon. Now my guess would have been that it could, you could have a mixture of both. Your instructor only went through the path where the iodide originally attacks this alpha carbon on the right and waits to attack the alpha carbon on the left until this step. I'm not sure if that's because he was ignoring one path or whether this path is faster. This path might be pretty fast because this is a very good leaving group mm -hmm. and this is going to be a very stable carbocation. So maybe before the iodide has a chance to attack, the carbocation is going to form here. All right. this, is not as, this is not as active a nucleophile as an O- minus or an N-, so this might not be fast enough to get in before the carbocation forms. So maybe this is the best path to show here. One thing we've seen is the importance of re recognizing that similar atoms can give you two different paths. For example, when we were learning the Williamson ether synthesis, we saw that the Williamson ether synthesis involves an SN2 reaction. but we have to keep in mind that you can't do the Williamson ether synthesis if you have too much steric hindrance because then you get an E2 instead, instead of the SN2. And we saw the same deal here. When you have a um, hydrohalic acid attack an ether, it could go through either an SN2 or an SN1 path. So you always have to be asking what's the right path to use. One nice thing about ethers is it gives you a chance to review the stuff that you've already gone over about SN2 and SN1 and E2 and E1. That was kind of the big the big moral of the reactions we went today, they were all kind of re a review and application of what we already were supposed to have learned about SN2 and E1. One thing that you might not have learned before, though, is how we can use acids to get reactions to happen that otherwise wouldn't happen, how the acids give you a better leaving group or a better electrophile. So that's an important lesson that we got here. We went through some important reactions here for ethers. So again, we saw one very important way to make the ethers, the Williamson synthesis that you want to review. And we basically went through one very important thing you can do with ethers. You can attack the ethers with these uh, hydrohalogen acids. And we saw how those reactions work too. These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There's a link to my website in the info box. The address is www dot freelance dash teacher dot com slash videos dot htm or you can just use the link in the info box. Thank you.